Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I have been out in the shop messing around with my MP CNC machine and I thought it'd be fun to try some half toning. That's what this is called when you drill a series of holes and then you wind up with a picture like this. And it's real easy to do uh, an MP CNC machine, any type of CNC router you can use this with. Uh, you can also do this with laser cutters. And there's some free software you can download that makes this a whole lot easier. You just load your image into the software and you mess around with a few settings and it generates your G-code. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how to get started with that. Okay, so I've got the software all loaded up here and as of recording this video, the current version is 1.7 and I've got a link to this down in the description of the video. So if you wanna check this out for yourself and play with some half toning, just check out that link and download the software and it's real easy to use. I'm gonna show you right here. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna to have to load your image and you do that by clicking the load image button. Then you just select your image. And my original image is of course Darth Vader. And the first thing you wanna do after loading your image is click the preview button that's down here in the bottom left hand corner. And I'm also using this with the MPCNC. So I wanna make sure and have it set to millimeters. Now if you look under style, there's also lines, squares, and circles. I haven't done anything with this, uh, but if you just give it a quick look, you can see if you click on this, it changes the style of the image. So instead of using dots, it could use lines or squares or circles. But with the V-bit on the CNC machine, dots is the one that you wanna use. And that will give you this halftone look that uh, we're going for and what I've done here with the MPCNC. Now the way this works is your V-bit will remove the material and the deeper the bit goes into your workpiece, the more material it's gonna remove. So this software just tells your V-bit to move across here and if you need more material removed, it'll go deeper and if you don't need as much removed, it'll just make a really shallow cut. Now, if you look over here on the left side of the screen, there's three tabs and the only tabs that I really use are the first two the generate and the tool path. So the first one has got all of your settings that you're gonna see on your screen. It's gonna affect how the image looks. Now there's no help file for the uh, half tone or software, but if you hover over something, it will give you this tool tip and it'll kind of give you a, just a little brief description of what the setting does. So right here on this first row, we've got width and height. That's going to be the width and the height of the piece that you're going to make, you know, your work piece. The uh, border, that's going to be this black line, this image, the border that's around the image. The spacing, and if you look here, I'm going to change this. The spacing is the amount of spacing in between each row of circles here. So you can see if you increase the spacing, you lose detail on your image, and then if you increase the spacing, you get more detail. And then you can go too far and then it'll, it'll flush out your image. And I've found the best, just mediocre, just starting point is to uh, somewhere around three. So start out at three and then you, know, you can tweak it the way that you want uh, your image to look. And then, um, Minimum size, that's the smallest size of hole that it will make. And then the maximum size will be the maximum size of hole that it makes. And again, if you click these, you can see as I change the size, that's gonna change how your image looks on the screen. So these will be the settings that you'll wanna to use to uh, kind of dial in your CNC machine in whatever size bit that you're using. Now the angle, that's not the angle of the V-bit, that's the angle of the row of dots. So if you look here, you can see as I change this, it kind of rotates the rows and columns around. So you can play around with that to kind of get the uh, effect that you want. Uh, I found, I just, I've always just set it on 90 or zero, which gives just the straight up and down or left to right rows. The uh, wavelength and amplitude, I have no idea what those do. Uh, there's a few other settings here, like the dark boost. If you check that or uncheck it, it'll kind of help out. If you have a really dark image, it, it kind of, I guess I would say, 
it uh, adjusts your contrast or brightness. And then if you've got an image where this one is black on white, but if you want it the other way around, white on black, you just hit the invert. And as you can see here, now the circles, instead of being um, cut out, the circles are the dark parts. So I haven't really messed with this. I haven't cut anything using the invert setting, but uh, that's what that does. It just, it just, it's like a negative image of the uh, cutout. So that's what all the settings do here on the generator. And once you've got it all set up and, and you've got your uh, image the way that you want it to look when it cuts out, you've got to generate the uh, G code for it, which is the toolpath. So the next tab to hit would be the toolpath tab. And there's a few settings here. Uh, the safe Z, now that's the height that the, the, the bit will travel over the workpiece as it moves from one hole to the other. And I found that two, two millimeters works great. Uh, that gets it enough clearance where it won't drag the bit across the workpiece. Uh, the feed rate, I've just been using the default, which is 1270, that's millimeters per minute. And then here, the tool angle. This is the angle that you want to set the same as your bit. So I have a 60 degree V bit. So I want to make sure my tool angle right here is set to 60. The spindle RPM and the engraving depth, I haven't really messed with those. Uh, the RPM, I can set that uh, manually on the MP CNC machine. But I guess if you've got a CNC machine that can set that speed off the G-code, you'd want to use that. Uh, the Z-offset and origin, I don't really know what those do because I haven't messed with them, I just leave the default. So uh, the only other thing left to do now is to write the G-code. So you hit the write the G-code button and then you just select on your hard drive where you want your G-code to go. And in my case, I just set it to an SD card and then I pop that into the MPCNC machine. So I'm going to write my G-code, put it on SD card, and then let's head back over to the MPCNC. So once you have your software and G-code all set up, uh, all you need to do is set up your workpiece. Now today I'm using plywood and I've painted the top black, but plywood probably isn't the best material to use because it contains voids. And if you see right here, this was a void or a defect that was inside the plywood that was covered up by the veneer. So MDF would be a good material to use. And there's also some types of foam core and other uh, materials. Uh, I don't know right offhand what they're called, but if I figured out, I'll put a link in the description. And those come with the top already black or a certain color. And then the, the middle part would be a white color. And that would probably be the best thing to use. But like I said, I don't really know what it's called right at the moment, but if I figure it out, I'll put it in the description. If you know what it's called, uh, leave a comment. You also need to use a V-bit for this, and that's what I've got right here. This is a 60 degree V-bit, and it's made by Whiteside, and I've got a link to this in the description. And they come in different angles. This one is a 60 degree, and you have to be sure and set that right angle in your software so that you get the right uh, hole depth and the right amount of material is removed when the CNC machine starts cutting. All right, so I've got the V-bit installed in the machine. It is zeroed, it is ready to go. So now it's time to fire it up.
All right, so here's the finished project, and it didn't turn out quite as nice as the first one, and that's because I went in there and messed with the software. That software's got a bunch of changes you can make to it to try and fine tune your picture, and it will take you probably a couple of tries to dial it in to get it the way that you want it to uh, print these pictures out. But here you can see I took out too much up here. So probably had the whole size, the maximum whole size too big. And then right here, there's a void that was in the plywood. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, that plywood's probably not a good material to use if you're gonna make things like that you're gonna try and sell or give away as gifts, because plywood just has too many defects that on the inside that you can't see that the veneer covers up. So I just want to point out a few things here. And first is this can be a little bit like 3D printing. This is the picture that I just made on the MPCNC. And you know, with all of the detail that's missing here, it, from a distance, it still looks okay. And it took about 45 minutes to make this one. Now the first one that I have here that has a whole lot more detail, it took well over two hours to make this. So. This, this can be like 3D printing, it can be time consuming, and it's also, you know, the better quality is gonna take longer to make. So this is just a fun project that you can do with your CNC machine, and if you'd like to share your experience with uh, half toning, please leave a comment in the video below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.